Welcome to the Lounge Lizards Podcast. It's so good to have you here. It's a leisure and lifestyle podcast founded on our love of premium cigars, as well as whiskey, travel, food, work, and whatever else we feel like getting into. My name is Gizmo. Tonight, I'm joined by Rooster, Senator, Pagoda, Grinder, and Bam Bam. And our plan is to smoke a cigar, drink some whiskey, talk about life, and of course, have some laughs. So take this as your 103rd official invitation to join us and become a card-carrying lounge lizard. Plan to meet us here once a week. We're going to smoke a Cupid cigar tonight, share our thoughts on it, and give you our formal lizard rating. We discuss the Hoyle line and its history. We read some listener email. We learn of serious changes to airline routes in and out of Havana, and we share stories of Cuban ingenuity, all among a variety of other things for the next 90 minutes. So sit back, get your favorite drink, light up a cigar, and enjoy as we pair Lambe Irish Whiskey with the Hoyo de Monterey Epicure Number 1. A Grand Corona tonight from Cuba, the Hoyo de Monterey Epicure Number 1. It's a 46 ring gauge cigar by 5 and 5 eighths inches. And boys, tonight might be the night <laughs> that Hoyo dies on this podcast. <laughs> well, let's be optimistic. <laughs> Speak like, for yourself. It already has died for some of us. I know it has. Let's be optimistic. Uh, so I Senate, like the size. I do too. 46. It's, it's nice. perfect. It's Same cigar. size as the Magnum 46. And it's a, a beautiful and there's cigar. There's some other sizes. It's nicely made. Yeah, it looks really good. The wrapper's yeah, really the nice. The wrapper's nice, yeah. Yeah, this is an old friend, you know, from back in the day. Yeah, for me, it was a better friend then than me it too. is now. I don't reach for them very, very much, but, you know, obviously doing it on the podcast tonight, I'm optimistic. We did the Epicure Special, right? No, we did the Epicure number two. Mm-hmm. We didn't do the Special. And then, no. no. And we did the, uh, we did the, uh, the tacos. Oh, the Escogidos. Yeah, Escogidos. Yeah. Which that yeah. did not go Great well. cigar. Mine, and then actually. Mine burned perfectly. <laughs> little, little secret for the listeners. We did actually start recording an episode with the Siri La Jolla Rio Seco. And we had to abort the episode because it was cigars were unsmokable. So we'll revisit that one in the future. But maybe we'll release that on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> we have another good one coming up for Halloween. All right, boys, let's cut this thing. So we're getting on the cold draw on the wrapper. It's a really nice looking cigar. I do love this size. You know, we've talked about this before. This Corona Gordas, as they call it in Cuba, is probably the cigar size that I appreciate uh, the most in in you know. And less than six inch uh, size. Um, I just love the Magnum 46. I reach for that so much. And this is that right in the same uh, family as far as uh, the nice, Vitola. Nice cold draw. Yeah. Mild. A little mm-hmm. bit of fruit. Mine's a little tight. Wide open here. Yeah, slightly tight, same. but not a little snug. Yeah. Here, yeah, mine's snug. I've had these for a while. What are you guys getting on the cold draw? I'm not really cold getting anything. Draw just has some cedar. Some fruit. Like I, I said, would agree. I get yeah. a little bit of fruit. It's nice and kind of creamy. Mm-hmm. Simple. I get, I get all cedar. Yeah, mine's all cedar. All right. The foot smells very nice. It does smell good, the foot. All right, boys, let's light this thing. The Hoyo de Monterey Epicure Number 1. Again, it's a 46 ring gauge Corona Gorda by 5 and 5 eighths inches long. The third Hoyo we've done on the podcast. And uh, we'll see how this does tonight. Box date on this is September 21. EGT, September 21. Okay. So when did you get these? I've had these probably for about 2019. Four months. <laughs> <laughs> Do we know what they're going for now? Yeah, these are about 25 a stick. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's expensive. That's, yeah. Oh, really good on the light. Oh, very good on the I'm light. I'm happy with that. Yeah. You know... Early in my Cuban cigar career, these were in my life a lot. Early on with the Monty 2s and the D4s and P2s, kind of all floating around together. But we all like, kind of ran away from these because of performance issues, right? Yeah, which we've all had yeah. so many times with Hoyo. Yes. But yeah, it's, it, I, I'm in the same boat, Bam. I mean, this was certainly, Hoyo obviously is one of the big global brands. Everybody knows the name. Oh, yeah. There's obviously a non-Cuban version of Hoyo de Monterey. Uh and, you know, this cigar in its size was actually, like, to your point, one of the first Corona Gordas I was smoking out of Cuba. Yeah. And then I moved fully over to the Magnum 46, which I think is a far wow. superior cigar. Agreed. At least until tonight. We'll see. The start is nice. Yeah, great, great combustion. There's a nice little pungent profile there, which is really nice. How would you describe the pungent? What, what, would, you, what would you say that is? Very slight barnyard. Very slight. And... um. 
almost like a, a you know that little cheese curd type thing okay i'm getting a little bit of that i'm getting some youth i like it i don't know i'm surprised this is better than i remember this cigar to start Me i've too. only had i think one of these before and i remember it being just like no straight cedar and earth you've had more of these no no I'm, one I'm not yeah that'd be one no i mean really? that'd be two i've had plenty but not not this yeah. um but this is more complex than i remember this starting and there's even like a Mm. faint creaminess about this there yeah. is there's yeah. definitely a creaminess here yeah yeah that dairy it's like creamy for me. cedar maybe like a little berry yeah some dried fruit for and sure and on the foot a very slight baking spice for me just very very the faint. foot really reminds me of cohiba yeah senator a little bit i agree with baking spice on the the I, nose I, just by the foot yeah 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 off to a good start mm-hmm so this cigar was originally released before the 1960s. What? Oh, nothing. I'm just laughing at pagoda smoke and smelling the foot. <laughs> I'm, t- I'm trying to. I, I can smell nothing. <laughs> just put it further up your nose. <laughs> he looks so when he he, he looks uh, perplexed when he's. <laughs> you got you got COVID. You, you got, got COVID. Uh, no. Yeah, I did. Yeah. No. Do you have COVID now? No. You can't no. taste anything. No, I I can't taste anything all the time anyway. <laughs> I just like the look too much spicy tree. food. <laughs> no, it's it's just that, uh, well, the hair in my nose uh, getting lit up over here. All right, nose clippers, man. <laughs> so the Epicure Number One was released before the 1960s. It comes in a variety of different uh, package options in a display box of a 15 aluminum tubos, the five cardboard packs of three, which came out in 2011. It comes in a slide lid box of 25 cigars. And it used to come in a 50-count cabinet. Wow. Unfortunately, it does not anymore, like so many Cuban cigars. So the display box of 15 cigars in uh, five cardboard packs of three, like I said, that was introduced in 2003. It was discontinued in 2011, and then it it reappeared uh, last year in 2022 for some unknown reason, as Cuban Cigar website calls it. So I don't know if that, you know... uh, type of packaging still exists for this cigar but the main option that you're going to get the epi number one in is the slide lid box of 25 what's cool too is the before 2005 it featured no bands on it it was one of those cigars from habanos that had absolutely no bands and Didn't now that. obviously it has two bands the classic um fifth version of the hoyo band which is really nice actually and then a separate second band on it that says epicure number one so just so i understand this correctly before 05, the Epi 1 had no bands, but the Epi 2, the Epi Especial had bands. I think so, yeah. I would love to know how they no, arrived at No, Epi that. 2 <laughs> didn't have bands before 2005 either. Oh, okay. That would make more sense. Yeah. I don't Pretty think wild. Is it true? Any of the, I think none of the Hoyos had Yeah, bands. I think you're right. I think you're right. The Depute, the Du Marie. None they of did them. not have bands. Yeah, they didn't have bands. Look and obviously you. a lot of cigars have been released you, since Rooster. that time. And they all do. One of the one of the classic cigars, though, that did have a band, you know, just as old as this one, if not older, is the Double. Hoyo Double Corona, and that always had a band on it, um, which comes in a twenty five count dress box, and of course the fifty count box of slide lid cigar, slide you know slide lid box of cigars. That HDC, is, I still love that cigar. We had some hit or miss moments with I it. Know we you had have. some. Ama- we had a grand slam. We did a couple I mean, times. Our first some... experience with it was great. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm glad everybody could have been there for that. <laughs> That was a great. Did we night. tell that story on the podcast? I think we did, but uh, that was the best cigar I've ever had in my life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me it tell sa- the story. Says the lizard who did start it all that. That's night. true. So <laughs> I get if black, get blamed. <laughs> you do get blamed because you're supposed to be the responsible one, unlike these guys. It wasn't at my house. No. So but you smoke your you smoked yours at your house and told us we should light it up. You zoomed in on it actually. <laughs> <laughs> so these guys are at Puba's house, Rooster's at his own home, and I had procured our first ever fifty count box for the group. That was incredible. The Hoyo way. Double Corona fifty count box. It was we back split when you had up. global entry. I had global but, entry then. But global you guys, cigar you guys had smoked that cigar prior. No, no, right? no. that was the never. First, never. No, you so told us how it great it was, it. and that's why we lit it up. Okay. Well, the so Connoisseur I, Corner has that all. <laughs> that's not true, but I've had the double Coronas before. Okay, but this—that was yeah. a first for us. Yeah, all yeah. of us. Ah, okay. This was right after the poker game, right? So these guys right. are at Puba's house on his deck. That was a great night. 
that was lighting up cigars and then rooster you know i asked him i said let's split this so let's smoke it together for the first time and then i'm not able to make it and i'm getting group text blown up about how incredible this cigar is at like two in the morning and uh yeah I, you were doing payroll that night i am still resentful <laughs> i can't for the life of me remember why i didn't sh- why, why was i out of town i must have been out of town i don't know i wasn't able to go so this was during covid yeah it was a covid thing it was it was probably you weren't traveling late 20 yeah it's a while it's been a while they smoked the box of cigars that i got for all of them that yep. was hard to find <laughs> without smoked, me you smoked all of them yeah. One, yeah. one night. Those things, <laughs> those things are still very hard to find. I think impossible. Yeah, that, I think those are harder to find right now than Lusitania. It's crazy. I mean, you know, they they come in a variety of different packages, but they're they're hard to get. So yeah. you still have you still have some? I have six or seven left. Yeah, I don't have any left. Yeah, you guys, yeah, you yeah. sold. Giz and I got rid of ours. Yeah, we got rid of them. Mm-hmm. I would have what, was, them. what was the issue? Was it plugged? It after was, that, after the first second, first or second cigar, I mean, they the performance just really on the rest of them that we had, it just seemed like a very and flavor wise, it just wasn't doing it for me. My very last one I had was here at our lounge. I was sitting at the bar and I just, it, it didn't burn. Hmm. It was awful. It was so frustrating. Wow. I'm not sure what happened. But people love those sticks, man. And they, uh, they're sought after. So, yeah. Yeah. A Rod's buying them all up. Yeah. Is That's he? his favorite cigar. That's what he smokes all the time. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. So, Hoyo de, uh, de Monterey was established in 1865 by Don Jose, Jose Henner de Batet. This is pretty cool. He's the owner. He was the owner of La Excepcion, which was a marca that preceded Hoyo that now is used by Habanos for special releases. So there are some La Excepcion uh, cigars that have been released in the last 15 or 20 years. Cool. Playing homage to that long history. Obviously, it's not a regular production marca, but they use it for special stuff. Uh, I think we mentioned this on a previous episode, so I'll kind of gloss over it on one of the other Hoyo episodes we've, we did. But the brand was very successful. And completely fell off in the 1930s. For some reasons, it changed hands several times and, and was a significant brand even after the industry was taken over during the Cuban Revolution. And it still remains a, a global brand. And then in the 1980s, 90s, obviously 2000s, really, really took off again as a major global brand. And anywhere that Cuban cigars are sold, you're always going to see this white Hoyo de Monterey band. Yep. Always. So in the Epicure line, there are uh, quite a few cigars, which we could talk about. There's five or four, I believe. Uh, the Epicure Number 2, which we did on a previous episode, which came out in 1972, which is a Robusto, 50 by 4 and 7 eighths inches. That's a classic cigar. People, yeah. Yeah. you know, as far as Cuban Robustos go, people love the Epi 2. I recently got a box of those. Did you? Just to hold on to. I uh, like that cigar. I've always liked it. Never had a problem. Epi 1s I've had a lot of problems with. Yeah, these just don't perform as well. Then there's the Epicure Especial, which Rooster mentioned earlier, which is a Gordito, 50 ring gauge by five and a half inches. That came out in 2008. And then finally, they have a La Casa del Habano exclusive release called the Epicure Deluxe, which is the same size as the Cohiba uh, Magicos, 52 ring gauge by four and a half inches, which comes in slide lid box of 10. So yeah, they... Um, Habanos puts a lot of emphasis on Hoyo de Monterey. And, uh, you know, as we've talked about with, uh, I would I would put this brand kind of next to Romeo, not on that same level, but as far as how much volume they produce, how, yeah. you know, uh, famous the brand is, how many people reach for those cigars. I just don't think they stack up. No. In performance. Let's, let's take flavor out of it. Let's but just talk performance. You wouldn't put this above the Romeo line? I would. I would put this above Romeo, but just slightly. Okay. That's I fair. think to Gizmo's point, I, I view those two brands as quantity over quality. That's Absolutely. where I think like some of the other brands that we love, Partigas, Upman, I think it's quality over quantity. 100% agree. Absolutely. Although I have to say, this is really smoking elegantly tonight. It's creamy. It's sophisticated. It's delicious, I think. I I'm, agree. Yeah. It, it's really an elegant experience right now. Yeah. Half an Subtle. inch in, this is one of the better Epi ones that I've had. So far. Ever. Yeah, so I mean, even on the light, I've had some real stinkers that <laughs> on the light, you're like, this is not going to be good. The, the draw is a little tight. Yeah, mine is too. Bit, well, that right? goes to the consistent inconsistency because mine's yeah. perfect. Yeah. Mine's perfect. Yeah. And that's well. always been the problem. And I think it also goes to this size too. That I think there's just a lot of tobacco in these Cuban Corona Gordas. You know, the Magnum 46 sometimes suffers from tight draw. 
You know, we've talked about that before. Mm -hmm. A lot of them, honestly. They do. It, it is Half a box. I mean, I love that cigar, but truly, exactly, half a box. You are you just know going in, you're going to have to have a perfect draw on you to try to smoke it. Yeah. This one? Epi the ma the Magnum Mag 46. 46. Oh, the Mag 46. It's the same size as this. You know, I just think that there's a lot of tobacco um, yeah. in this Vitola. You know, it just, it just sets itself up for um, potential draw issues. Mm. Yeah, what I'm finding is the front of my palate's become very flavorful, but the back I'm getting a little bit of, I guess, tobacco. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I feel like a little, it's a little harsh towards the, I, I, and I'm not sure why. My my um, finish is also pungent. I'd say. Uh, is that, is I love that. that though. It has a little it's, dry finish. I think. Yeah, yeah, that's a I great way of putting it. Yeah, I agree. The finish is dry. So the question is, is do you guys like that or no? I like it. I have no problem with this right now. Yeah. I think I think that was the youth that I was describing because it felt a little what ammonia. like unbalanced or ammonia yeah, or something. Ammonia e. Um, I don't taste the ammonia. I don't. E I, think, I, I think I was equating that because they're kind of similar, but but that does have like a not a scent, but you kind of you can tell when it's like an ammonia and you, flavor oh, that you and you taste get. it on on in the taste, in the mouth yeah you know but yeah. this you don't you taste this is good in the mouth ammonia is distinct yeah. you want to throw that cigar across the room but sometimes you just get it and then it goes away that's true so yeah. you remember we were talking about it a very long time back you should blow out and oftentimes the ammonia goes right. out in the beginning right. yeah yeah purge the cigar mm. i always do that as i'm lighting the foot um of the cigar when i'm lighting it the first thing I do before I, you know, put the cigar in my mouth and light it for real, you know, I toast the foot and then I purge the smoke out. Every cigar? Every cigar. I purge the smoke out and then I light it. But you, you don't have to do it in the beginning. You could do it when you're like halfway through. So you kind of... I you can always you. purge the cigar. I don't know about the rest of you. I never do that. Yeah. Me neither. No. Yeah. Me neither. Every time I light a cigar, I do it. Oh, interesting. When I toast it, I, I purge that and then I light it. Oh, you're a technician. <laughs> <laughs> why they call me gizmo yes sir <laughs> he does come with extra instructions <laughs> yes sir <laughs> so hoyo has a lot of cigars in its line we only covered a few uh they have the coronations which is which is a petite corona they have the la hoyo series which features a few the dumer which is a small panatella very small 30 ring gauge by three and seven eighths inches they have the palmas extra which is a corona 40 by five and a half another la hoyo called the depute it's a short panatella. I like, I like that. You like that cigar, right? Yeah. yeah. I think Senator, I gave him one. It's Very a, good. It's a Depute. 2013. What's the Vitola? It's, it's a short small, panatella. It's, it's a 38 by 4 and 3 eighths. Ah, okay. Quick smoke. Yep. They also a have a flavor. Petit Robusto, which is a 50 ring gauge by 4. Epicure Special, as we mentioned. Robusto Extra, 50 by 5.5, the Gordito. Uh, they have some Casa del Habano exclusive releases, the Epicure Deluxe which is a Magicos. We talked about that. The La Jolla de San Juan, which is a Robusto Extra, 54, a little under six inches. The Elegantes Tacos, that's the one we did. We did not do the Escogito. <laughs> the Elegantes, which did not do well. We'll go over the rating later. We had tacos. LCDH uh, Perfecto, 47 ring gauge by six and a quarter. We did do that one on the podcast. The Rio Seco we just mentioned, which is an Aromosos, 56 ring gauge by five and a half. I could go on and on and on. Only marca that doesn't have a pyramid. That's true. Is that true? What's funny, though, you can get a Hoyo pyramid in the Selection Pyramides sampler where they feature the six global brands. They do make, or they put a Hoyo band on whatever they have. <laughs> That's probably what they which do. Which is probably <laughs> the most likely scenario. It's a quava. You can, it's a, you can get a sample, uh, and it's a pyramid -y. Cool. You know, but alongside the, the Monty two, and not in a regular, production. not in the regular line. Just yeah, there. which is also the same for Hoyo, or excuse me, for Upman, with the Robusto in the selection Robusto. They do not have a regular production Robusto, um, the Royal Robusto, but that's not a tr uh, that's All not right. the same size. Um, but but almost every marca has a pyramid. And a Robusto true. and a Robusto. I mean, and both are ridiculous. Yeah. The fact yeah. that Hoyo doesn't have a uh, <laughs> sorry that Upman doesn't have a Robusto is crazy to me. It's another demerit. <laughs> and Hoyo doesn't have a pyramid. The Escogito, which uh, Rooster mentioned, is a La Casa del Habano uh, exclusive release. It's a double Corona, 49 ring gauge by 7 and an eighth inch. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of in line with the Hoyo double Corona. They just put a second band on it. They have the Souvenir Deluxe, which is a petite Corona. You guys would know this one. It comes in those five-pack tins, uh, similar to the Partagas. 
The half corona. Uh, no, the, the other part of um, Oh, the capital. The capital comes in a similar tint to that. And then finally, they have a Robusto coming uh, in a Originalis Vitola, 54 ring gauge by 4 and 7 eighths inches called the Epicure Number no. 3, which they announced last year and is coming out probably in two or three years. I'm so looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I mean, they must have... Pagoda's on fire tonight. 50. <laughs> Someone get the fire extinguished. His fire's smoldering. It's building. It's building. <laughs> they must have 50 or 100 uh, various Vitolas that have been canceled over the years. Wow. And they also, you know, obviously as a global brand, uh, Habanos uses this a lot for Edicion Limitadas. Mm. So that's a pretty common thing. So you see a lot of those out there, Grand Reservas, Reservas, et cetera. So that's the rundown of Pollo de Monterey. What do you guys think of the Epicure number one? We're about an inch in. Yeah, I like it. I have no complaints. It's not bad. Yeah, yeah I think I'm it's performing so well. Tastes okay. I, I don't love it. It's it, not something yeah, that I'm sort of excited okay. about. It's, it's not ex- it's not exciting, right? There isn't much there, but what you do get, it's pretty <laughs> creamy and smooth. I was going to say the same, well, not the same exact thing, but a very similar thing. I was going to say it's kind of boring, but I, but I, it's not boring enough for me to be like, this is trash. I think you this is a very good cigar. You can't throw it away. No, it's a, it's a good cigar, but I think maybe there's an expectation miss that there or something. I don't know. But I, th- I think for me, it just lacks absolute complexity. I just mm-hmm. think that there's yeah. nothing from a flavor standpoint or, or that's just interesting beyond I'm smoking a decent cigar. Yeah. You know, which I, for the money, for the competitors, even inside the Habanos catalog, like the Magnum 46 and others, you would I expect more from this cigar. Is this a well-acclaimed cigar? Yeah, people love the oh, Epicure yeah. one. Epi 1, Epi 2, Double well, Corona. No, I know the Epi 2. Epi 1 is 2. Mm-hmm. It's hard to get right now. These cigars are not as not easy. Uh, yeah, around as they were. Epi 2 comes out a little bit more than these do, but you know, like even uh, on FOH, they were they had a conversation going about how Epi 1s have completely uh, disappeared over the Senator, last what do you think year. You know, I think I, I kind of agree with what everybody has said. Uh, my expectations are very low for for Oyo, so this has definitely exceeded them. I think, you know, Bam says it's a very pleasant smoke, um, smooth, creamy, very well constructed great draw things i never say about oil so I, i'm actually very pleased because of that but i also don't think gizmo's wrong in that it's not that interesting it's not like there's mm-hmm. even one particular pronounced flavor note i'm getting that i'm saying like oh wow that that's really drawing me back to it it's just that for this kind of mild style that it's delivering there's nothing offensive and it's just i think grinder said like just interesting enough that i'm happy with it but it, it probably, you know, would benefit from something a little yeah. more pronounced. I think this is a great cigar to be like, if you have those guests that we, this, the guest example. That's a great That's point. like, I want a Cuban cigar. Or like, you know, they're insistent about you. This is a good one to give because it's not like a throwaway, but it's kind of like a The problem throwaway. is it's, it's $25. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's the, the problem. problem. 20, oh. 25 bucks. Yeah. I think I would give them a D4 over this oh, any, any day. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, and they're the same I mean, price. You must same, really like same, those guests. And they're easier to get. D four is easier price, to get. Than they would be a lot more satisfied with the D four over this. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah, true. I, if you want to treat your guests well, you give them a D four. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm thinking, you know, twenty five. I guess I'm, that's that's a lot for this. So much they are now. Everything's going up that yeah, price. Yeah. I I think the yeah. thing though, Grinder's saying that I agree with is this is a good beginner cigar. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. a D four could be enjoyable to a beginner but for someone truly new to cigars it may have a little more flavor than they're probably ready for where this is so easy going i mean anybody who's interested in a cigar would probably be able to appreciate this yes Fantastic that's points. exactly what. great points. i think my mom would enjoy this cigar <laughs> i'm gonna give this to my mother as her first cigar every every, every mom's favorite cigar <laughs> mama you're mom. number one <laughs> mom, mom you're number one <laughs> well that's how's mother's day mama. like son you don't have the double corona for me <laughs> don't you love me? <laughs> you I don't just, want to turn around. <laughs> okay, I better shut up. <laughs> yeah, I just don't find there to be much interesting about it. Unfortunately, I think to you know everybody's point. I think it's performing fine. I think it tastes okay. It's just uh, it's just boring. I have. Uh, I think I think it's a, t- a good time to have a uh, something to maybe oh, yeah. cleanse the palate because this aftertaste is just laborious. <laughs> Let's try it. We got the... Uh, it's a heavy lift. We got the Lambe 
Irish whiskey, which uh, brought it in tonight because it says it's finished in cognac casks, which uh, we've done a run of a lot of cognacs on the pod, I don't among think many other things. I don't think so I've, I've had this sitting in ice for a little bit, and it's and it's it's dissolved. the The aroma on the nose, it's very fruity. Yeah, Do you guys it get is. that? Yeah, it's yeah. Like, fruity. It's like yep, it is watermelony. But similar to our cigar, for me, it's it, it kind of lacks complexity in body. And it's very light. Yeah, it's, it's drinkable, light. but... I'll be honest. I think that where this is, as far as body goes, I think it matches perfectly with the cigar. I agree. I was going to yeah. say the same thing. I think thing. anything more, yeah. we'd be saying it's overpowering. We said that earlier. Yeah. Yeah. This, this yeah. mild cigar. It looks like a Japanese whiskey. It does. Yeah. It's very light in it's color. True. That's a good point, Rooster. For the listener, I mean, Ooh. as far as whiskey goes, even Irish whiskey... Very yellow. It's very, yeah. It's very thin, and it, there's it's not no, very viscous. No cognac going on in there. No, no. none of that. No. Maybe it, it was in there for like two days. It reminds me of Dalwini. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I gotta say, I I like the front. Of, I like the front of this. I like although, it. although less sweeter. Yeah, yeah but da- but fruitier. Uh, like, Dalwini's better than this. It's pretty. I mean, I think it's pretty good. It's not bad. It's an it's Irish. Right. Irish are triple distilled. They're usually very light. You know, it so. looks like flavored water. <laughs> <laughs> That's because we so gave you uh, we gave you seltzer with lemon. All right, fair enough. It's tasting good mm. with this with the sploosh of something else. How much is that bottle? <laughs> Do we know? I think it's about forty bucks. Forty five bucks. I yeah, saw on forty forty five. Yeah. Oh, that's a lot of money for that. Sorry, is it? for me, yeah. Is there anything? There's, there's nothing any cheaper Scotch than forty. Whiskey that's cheaper. Yeah, no, but there's other scotches that pay like ten more dollars and get a really nice experience. So, Senator, do we know anything about Lambay? What do you? Not a lot of history there. I know that. Yeah, there's there's not much, but there there's some something that's interesting about their story. It says uh, uh, Lambay uh, Irish Whiskey Company made its market debut in 2018 as an independent whiskey company based in Dublin. The company, this is what's interesting. The company is born from a collaboration between Camu, the world's leading family-owned cognac producer, and the Baring Families uh, Trust of Lambay Island. It was named after the island of Lambay in Ireland, a private wildlife sanctuary owned by the Baring family since 1904. So, I mean, it's it's a product of very established brands and companies. I'm really surprised that a cognac company is making Irish whiskey. That's a little odd to me, but um, I mean, it's very new. 2018. I mean, they're they're very new at this, and yeah. I think it kind of shows this hence, is a very hence the performance entry level uh, expression. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely better than the romper we tried. Did we do that? We didn't do that on the pod. Oh, we didn't. It was, that, it was that bad that day. <laughs> <laughs> so on the on the back of the bottle, Senator, it it and and I'm curious what you guys think of these flavor notes. I always love reading the flavor notes on these bottles because I always <laughs> think they're so far off. Features notes of malt, flora, nope, cracked almonds, nope, and pepper. <laughs> uh no. <laughs> <laughs> so and, and to me, they're over four. What the heck? On the flavor notes, I don't get any of that <laughs> no. on this. And are you guys getting any of the cognac finish? Not at all. No. To me, it's Zero. just very sweet and kind of fruity up front. But I don't. I again with the cigar, I don't mind that at all. This is so sweet and light that this honestly reminds me of like a, um, like a cla- no, like a like a Clase Azul tequila. Clase Azul. Oh, where it's like super light that's and a sweet. Very, that's a great point. Yeah. That's really what it reminds me of. Just light, sweet, easy drinking. That's yeah, Clase yeah. Azul tequila. And this would probably make good cocktails. You make mix yeah, this with something. Good. Yeah. Like a summer cocktail. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not anything that requires serious whiskey. Mm-mm. But it is like, helping. Can you imagine making a Manhattan with this thing? <laughs> no, please. I mean, my God. <laughs> yeah. In a way, I wouldn't qualify it as a whiskey, but hey. What, what, what is it not, if not a whiskey? Tell me. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't feel like a whiskey, does it? You know, no, it really does. I mean, honestly, to me, this does not drink like 99% of whiskeys. Speaking of I Manhattan, agree. Speaking of Manhattan, sorry. I got to cut right to this. We need cocktails. Yeah. On this podcast. We've actually okay. we, we actually put it up on the Instagram. I don't know if you guys saw it. We did. We put yep. it up um asking the listeners for cocktail recommendations and requests. And we actually got quite a few. I got few, quite a few emails oh, let's from folks. Yeah. So we we're, we're you know, we have to we have to do some mixed drinks nice. uh coming up on the pod. We That's got a exciting. we got a lot of between requests. Senator and Pagoda, I think we're set here. And Puba with his bloodies. That's right. That's true. Bloody Marys. Yeah. What would you pair with a Bloody Mary? 
I would probably pair a Cuban. Oh yeah, like I, I D4. love uh, yeah D four. Anything Partagas I think really pairs well with the mm. the kind of little bit of uh, spice spice Spiciness. of uh, you know bloody. That's kind of a silly question because I like pretty much all the room pairs a bloody with something every Sunday morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have an answer for you. Yeah, you could do a Coronas Claro. Yeah, that could be yeah. interesting. I think anything Cuban yeah. goes well with that, and I think what's interesting about the flavor profile of a Bloody Mary with the between the the acidity in the tomato combined with the, the spiciness. It, it, for some reason, it really just works well, shockingly well, with Cuban cigars for me. Agreed. I haven't had a Bloody in a long time. Yeah, I haven't had one in probably quite a few months. Me too. Yeah, we got to get back to that. Yeah, this summer, I, th- I don't think, yeah, we've really indulged into Bloodies. It's the problem is we had a, we're back to work and life. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah, all that stuff's in. getting in, getting the, yeah, everything's yeah. getting in the way of our, uh, in you know, imbibing extracurricular. Back to school night coming up. Walking, you excited about that, Bam? Walk in the halls. <laughs> we just need to imbibe more discreetly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's where Classic. the lizard sippy cup and the thermos come in. <laughs> the thermos, oh yeah. yeah, absolutely. Oh, what a great moment that was. Puba describing the thermos at the soccer game. <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy is he's not, he's you not, know, he's not rare in doing that. So mm-hmm. I think all the parents that go to those games have some sort of. Oh, yeah. I think Grinder and I are just a few years off of following right in his footsteps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the three of you can compare notes. So I have to make a, a note. I, I don't think I've ever gotten a correction as far as making an error on this podcast. As I did with episode 98, we did the. Uh, Kawaba. Kawaba Salomon. And I read a note that. And I said it a few times, I think. The Kawaba is not designated for regional edition releases. And I think I got maybe 25 between Instagram, email, and everything else going, you crazy. You know, there's, there's a regional. So you got lit up. I got lit up. We got lit up. This so, is good. Gizmo sometimes needs accountability. This yeah, he does. <laughs> uh, actually, more often than not. Bam Bam has been waiting for this moment. I know he has. Every time I'm under the gun, Bam lights up like a Christmas tree. I do. By, I crack a smile. <laughs> he enjoys it too much. Like the Grinch. <laughs> so, in fact, there was a Asia Pacifico Edition Regional that was announced in 2020, came out in mid-21. It's a perfecto taco size, very similar to the Elegantes uh, from Hoyo that we did on the podcast recently, 47 ring gauge by six and a quarter. So, in fact, I was wrong. There is a Kawaba regional. Wow. So I'd like to duly apologize to the listeners for feeding them bad information. I'm not apologizing to you guys. No, but I'm apologizing to the listeners. <laughs> oh, come on. You let us down. Giz. <laughs> did I mean, you guys have a meeting about it? I, I couldn't sleep last night just thinking about this. The first rule of How accountability hour is you have to take accountability. That's I, right. Full accountability here. That's kind of cool, though. The, there's merit because listeners are listening. That's yeah, right. and exactly what that, I was going to say. It's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. We need yeah, more the listeners that. are on it. Like now when I'm like prepping for an episode, like I'm like, <laughs> shit, I better get this right. Better be on point. Yeah. It's, it's, always, so, it's always so fun to hear that people... Tune in to listen as they smoke a cigar on the patio and just be like, I'm going to hang out and listen to the pod. Yeah, it's amazing. It's so great. to. It's so fulfilling. And, and the, the feedback that's coming in now is, is really just incredible. So Really a, incredible. Let me ask you guys a question. Have you ever listened to the pod for the second time or third time while you're smoking that cigar that we talk about on the pod? That's a great question. That's a great question. Uh, no. No. I actually That's haven't. a great question. See what I do. I don't think any of us have done that. We should do that. Well, we should. Good idea. By, By the, the time, time, I think it would just enhance the whole experience. I agree. I try you to. Know, I try really to. Listen. I think next time we hang it on my deck, we'll do that. Because <laughs> now, now that you have the Sonos set up. Yep. Thank oh. you. By the way. Oh, it was so yeah. technological you know. assistance. Wait, yeah. you got a <laughs> rover? You got a TV? No, no. He 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 bought the Sonos, the Move. That's for any listener out there. Right. If you want like a great portable outdoor speaker, the best one is the Sonos Move. Um, I I'll know put it in the episode description. You have nice. one? Yeah. So Rooster and I have Giz? I have a Bose little one, but I have Sonos. No, everywhere. that doesn't count. That doesn't count. Rooster and I have one. Be now accountable, Pagoda Giz. has one. Be accountable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Pagoda had it. We were at Pagoda's the other night, and um, he's like, oh, I got the move. I was like, great. And Because he had this little speaker, the music. It was like hard to even hear. 
So I was like, bring it out of here. He's like, I tried setting this thing up so long, I couldn't, it just doesn't work. So I had to put my gizmo hat on and I got his Sono set up and now he's uh, you know, now I, dialed I, in. I didn't get the tech genes of being Indian. Like, what the hell is that? <laughs> That's true, man. By the what? way, I sent him unsolicited <laughs> the other day because we were talking on the chat yeah, about exactly did. this. About unsolicited. I sent him three links. I said, here's the TV. Here's the <laughs> rover cart. And here's the TV cover. Order them immediately. <laughs> did you order them? Not yet. Jesus. Begotten. Gizmo even filled the cart for you. I did. Did I not? I sent him three links. <laughs> I said, bing, bang, boom. Order them. He did. He did. Order them. <laughs> bing bang boop bing bang boom no he really did and, and I yeah I think I should order I, them I know way. why he's not ordering it because it's oh. winter coming no because he's like you know who's going to put that thing together uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to put it together the uh, the Sonos move is I, I personally don't have one but I've given it as a gift twice and it's like everyone loves it it's game changing by the way they just came out with I'm such a sucker for Sonos products this is almost embarrassing to admit they just came out with the Sonos Move 2, Ooh. which has 24-hour battery life. Which That's is pretty good. Dramatic improvement. That's pretty good. The I current see. one, I think, is like eight hours, maybe. Um, so I just ordered that. Hey, why do you think I bought it? It was on sale. That's right. Because <laughs> I got, 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 got hundred bucks off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, there's, cool. there's a lot of Indian in me from that perspective. The other yeah. thing I like with Sonos, this is what makes it so easy to get in the rabbit hole with them. They now have like an upgrade program where if you upgrade any existing product that they make a new version of, they'll give you 15% off the oh, new product. That's give you so credit. cool. Yeah. So Very nice. 15% off. Nice. Well, that's great. Okay, 50 maybe I'd consider. <laughs> I'll put that in the uh, episode description, the Sonos Move for oh, folks yeah. to check that out. So, yeah. you know, going back to the question that Rooster asked about listening to the pod, I mean, by the time I'm done editing the episode, I'm so sick of my own voice that I never go back and listen unless I need to or, you know, it's, you know, pops up in the car and I'm checking something. But the one thing I will say, though, is after I'm done, done editing, I f often find myself, even if we have a cigar that's kind of mediocre, after editing and listening to it as much as I do, I'm always thinking of the next day, I always want that specific cigar. Really? And I often light it. Oh. Yeah. I always go back and say, you know what? I remember that it happened on the Kawaba Salomon episode. You had one the day after? The day after, I was really craving the Salomon <sighs> because we, you know, had a nice experience with it. We did. We you did. know, so... I don't know. That's my experience with, hmm. with listening back. We, we don't have any of those. No, we don't. He doesn't share. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you know, talking about listeners, um, I ended up meeting uh, another listener at Carnegie the other day, and uh, it was great. He, oh, Giannis on the Bucks. Yes. Yeah. Oh, we, we did see Giannis, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Giannis was there. He's, he's not yeah. kidding. Yeah. yeah Ab he avid there. listener and loves our podcast, by the way. <laughs> he's, he's coming to the Knicks? <laughs> yes, he's coming to the Knicks. The rumor starts here, and he'll be a Nick. Uh, saw him at Carnegie, and he is so bloody tall. It's, you know, it's like, uh, you, you, can keep, you can keep looking up. It's ridiculous. And a Hoyer double Corona looks like a petite Corona. <laughs> for him. It does. Yeah. So he sent out a photo of Giannis. To me, he looked frail. Really? He looked very, very lean. Thin. Very yeah, he lean. He did look thin. Huh. Very lean. But on the court. On the court. Playing, I mean, he's jacked. He's jacked. He's on the Mediterranean diet. I mean, the be. crazy thing is, if you look at photos. The, the pharmaceutical great. diet. <laughs> if you look at photos when he came in the league versus now. He was a stick. He literally looked like he hadn't, he was starved and didn't have food. I mean, it's crazy <laughs> how much muscle yeah. this guy put on once he got into the NBA. Yeah, he's an Adonis, that guy, man. Yeah, KD could use some of that muscle. <laughs> <laughs> so he's you were really, saying, well, he's, really he, he's the slim reaper for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> so Pagoda, you were saying you met a listener. I want to hear this. So yeah, I'm so really interested in this. So he's uh, from Toronto, and uh, he was talking about how difficult it is to find a place to smoke there. But they still do have a reasonable cigar community, and um, they're not very uh, happy with the way cigars are being sold in Canada now. I think I'd we had mentioned this in one of the episodes before mm -hmm. that they cover the label with a you know like a very uh, generic wrapper so that it's not really attractive to, uh, you know, the younger kids and so on and so forth. You can't smoke outdoors. And you can't smoke anywhere. He you says, even if you go buy cigars, you, you can't smoke You have to hide there. in your garage, apparently. It's the worst. Yeah, and pray yeah, that your pray neighbors your, don't yeah. call the police. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> pray your yeah. neighbor doesn't smell it. Trudeau's Canada. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Speaking yeah. of. A cop shows up on a horse. It's like a reverse utopia can, out there. Can you imagine we, we started recording the podcast at my place and we all lived in Canada in my garage? <laughs> oh my we would God. have had the police there like after episode two. <laughs> we're you in just the backyard. crack the window and it's pouring out. <laughs> it's the we're smoke. in the backyard, seven of us peeing in a line. 
<laughs> so anyways, Pagoda, sorry. No, no. So what was great is, you know, once again, we keep reiterating, you know, how the Sagal community is just an amazing community to be involved with and belong to, really. Uh, you know, we started a conversation and he happened to listen to the episodes and with a buddy of his in a garage and he says, oh, you're the group of guys that hang hang out together and you talk about cigars and he wasn't very into it, but his buddy was, but he, and so, you know, it's it's interesting that people are trying cigars because, you know, we're sharing the knowledge, uh, which is great. But having said that, I'll be uh, in Toronto in a couple of weeks and He's invited me over to go and meet his buddy in his garage and we'll smoke there. He says, don't worry about it. I have a place for you to smoke cigars. Once again, <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's uh, wonderful being a part of this uh, excellent community. He'll be like, here, let's go in his sub-cellar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he has like a, he has like a yeah. doomsday if, bunker. Exactly. If you, for cigars Pulp Fiction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you need to post bail, just call one of us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any Canadian dollars, so I'm out. No, but that's that's amazing, man. You know, hearing from listeners, I mean, even, you know, we had a pretty big discussion on that episode about the ethics of going to Cuba and buying Cuban cigars. We, you know, we had a long discussion about that. And we had a lot of listener feedback on kind of both sides of the issue, you know, kind of th- these internal debates that are happening. Um, so, you know, we love hearing from listeners. Uh, so please definitely email us and Obviously, tell us what you want us to smoke and drink, but also give us, you know, feedback. So what, what were the listeners saying? I'll give you one right now. So Carl wrote, I get the conflict one might have with purchasing Cubans. It's interesting how opinions are shaped. China, for example, is widely accused of using child labor and modern day slavery, and the U.S. consumer as a whole hardly bats an eye. We funnel billions into the hands of tyrannical governments across the globe, and much of the population are oblivious participants. Why should Cuba be any different? Mm-hmm. He's not wrong. No, he's not. Not wrong. You know, it's it's just it's an interesting, you know, thought. And I always go back to every time I you know I get an email from someone, I always go back to you know what what the those individual moments that we have on the ground in Havana where we're able to help someone that defines it for me. Agree. So yeah, we had a we had a lot of good feedback on that. So tough, tough times in Cuba right now. It is inflation through the roof. And now, did you guys hear, by the way, JetBlue has completely stopped flying to Cuba. It's nuts. Period. And United has stopped flying their direct flights from Newark. They had daily direct flights, which we took advantage of, obviously, from Newark to Havana every day and and back. And now they've gotten rid of the direct flights. You have to now connect in Houston at their hub to get to Havana. Oh, my God. So there are now, between JetBlue leaving entirely and EWR not having any flights from United, there are no New York airports that have direct flights to Havana at all. So we need, to, we need to file a lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. This is like discriminatory against every c- cigar Cigar smoker. man in I the mean, world. this is ridiculous. <laughs> Lizard discrimination. I mean, instead of a four-hour flight, it's going to be a six, six-and-a-half-hour flight. That's a disaster. With a stopover in Miami. Or Houston. Or Houston. Yeah. And you better hope you make it. Can't to the I take a flight. cruise ship from Bayonne to Cuba? Good, no. good so luck with there's, that. There's <laughs> no Float over on a piece of driftwood and let us know how that goes. Yeah, there's, there's <laughs> no cruise ships no, no, from it, the U.S. It's going to be one of those gliders with a motor on it. Right? Guys, do we know? Do we know why? Uh, I think it's a volume. It's just a volume, it's just a volume issue. Yeah, I mean, wow. I, how many times, guys? You know, on our flights back and forth, the plane is half full or less. You yeah. know, there's times where you have the entire row to yourself, and that's the entire plane. Obviously, they're making a lot of money on baggage because people fly pretty heavy, you know, on bags. But, you know, certainly not enough to warrant a daily route, which is odd to me. But I guess, like Grinder said, I mean, things have just gotten so bad economically in in Cuba that it's just a challenge. It's odd because JetBlue is only flying Saturday, like one day a week. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, that's you, from JFK. They did JFK, fly right. other... I think they probably flew from Miami, Fort Lauderdale, not, maybe. Oh, you yeah. know, um, but they've completely stopped flying yeah, in and out I mean, of United Havana. United was every day. Yeah, but you know, United's still flying in Havana. JetBlue is completely done. Period. Their entire company, no more flights to Cuba, which is a big loss. Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough time economically, and then to have a drop in tourism that hurts even more. You know, it's, it's not good. Stru- yeah, you know, and you know, we were talking earlier. There was a. Uh, an article in the in CNN about mercenary Russian mercenary recruiters, basically lying to Cuban 
uh, to Cuban nationals to get them to sign up and, and fight for Russia and Ukraine. And they Horrible. they get over there and then they they disappear. Yeah, <laughs> it's awful, it's horrendous. And I think you know, like you said, they you know, the Russia was lying to the Cuban government about it, mm-hmm. and to the Cuban people that they were recruiting. <laughs> you know, just completely telling lies to you know bolster their ranks with Cuban nationals who have no skin in the game here. Nope, for Russia or Ukraine, and now they're fighting a war that you know thousands of miles away from home. Horrendous. It's infuriating. It, 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 make, it makes you, again, realize that people will do desperate things when they're in desperate positions. Yeah. Yeah. So, boys, what do you think of the uh, Epicure number one? About halfway through here? It's all right. It's typical uh, yeah. Hoyo DNA. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. You know, you get that cream, you get that cedar, mm-hmm. but it's a little bit different than the Epi 2. Yeah. Right. I think the Epi 2 has an added layer of complexity and sweetness I get that more, is absent here. I get more coffee in the Epi 2 for me yeah. than this. Um, and it's a bit richer. Both, I like both though. I, I can't say that I hate them. I have an odd construction complaint. Mm. The <laughs> ash really? on my cigar <laughs> is super flaky and is just like crumbling off at points, which I had ash like all over me. I was just wiping off something about how this was rolled. And I noticed it's funny because when I looked at the foot, it was it looked wide open. I thought this was going to have too open a draw. But then when I cut the cigar and we we first lit it, clearly down by like the, the head of the cigar, it's actually somehow densely packed. So I think it's just like so loosely rolled at points that the ash is just kind of crumbling off as it burns. It's, it's either sense. that or you got the short filler Hoyo. <laughs> <laughs> the scraps. Gizmo bought more fix. <laughs> I did. I bought some more fix. I don't, I don't have any major complaints. I also don't have any many accolades. Yeah. Um, it's right down I, the middle. I think the, um, I've had it touched up like two or three times so far, but generally it's a good burn. I, have, I don't have flaky ash. Um, yeah, it's just kind of it's indifferent. It's yeah. typical Hoyo inconsistencies, you know. <laughs> my, <laughs> you know my, and, draw issues, and that's the problem issues. with Hoyo, man. You you know you you do have those moments, you know, like we talked with Rob Isle. You, you have that one Hoyo cigar that just n- blows you away, and it, you you think that you can chase this, yeah, you can, and find it again. And I think that maybe that's even more disappointing for me than Romeo because I've never really had that experience with Romeo. That now I chase that and look. As a po- that's a possibility in one of those cigars for me. I've had that with Hoyo. Mm-hmm. I've had it in Epi Two. I've had it even in Epi One. I've had I've had really good Epi Ones. This one started really good. How is your draw now? Did you take a draw to it? I perfect took a draw? little perfect draw to it. You, I, did. you know, as as we were talking, okay. I just tried to open up the foot a little bit. It was tight. Um, nothing to like really write home about. It's not not as you know uncommon as I would with a Magnum Forty Six, but you know, I've had great Epi Two. I've grad. I've had great. Uh, double corona and i do chase that sometimes you know when you reach for a cigar it's like is this the one is this the one that's going to take me back to that promised land and this market just does not deliver that yeah does not deliver consistent greatness yeah but when you get a good one it's good, it's good. yeah yeah and i think yeah. epi2 as far as the robusto goes construction wise i've not had many issues with that cigar neither have i agree yeah just flavor wise they're hit or miss yep but construction, they're fine. Yep. But I think that's a cigar people really, really love. Yeah. It's just sad because it's just like that. that's batting like 100, right? It's like one out of every 10, my experience has been, is really enjoyable. And the other nine just suck. And at that point, it's like, just send it down to the minor leagues. Like there, There's no <laughs> reason that you should have a global brand that they put so much effort and money into promoting that doesn't even half the time deliver a consistently good experience. Yeah. Even half would be a huge improvement. Well, and the pricing is not... Uh, oh, know, no, and they're not expensive. cheap. I mean, I, 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 I don't think they're... I don't think they're trying to strive for excellence here. I think they're trying to strive for a, a brand that they know will sell. You know, So then it comes down to what we were talking about earlier. It's the volume. I think it has a place in their portfolio. And this is a money, this is a cash cow. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely a volume product for them. But what's funny again is these have completely disappeared off the market. You You're can't down. find Epi Epi ones anywhere. Yeah. You're down pretty far. I'm about uh, a little over halfway. Right. I'm a little You're ahead further of, than ahead me, of you guys. Yeah, I kind of like how it's developing right now. It's getting a little bit richer, just a bit. The cream's still there for me. Same. I'm still getting the you know heavy cedar for sure. Mm-hmm. 
but it's just it it it's not, uh, not rounded out by anything else. Yeah, I like the way you surround it out because for me, I think a lot of the flavor is just in the front of my whole, like in terms of the palate. And it does it's have just, a short finish and uh, a bit. You know, it, it really doesn't. It's not complex and it doesn't really fill your hole. Yeah, it's it's interesting though. It's not bad. And fortunately for me, the cigar is burning really well. Mm. Clean me too. Lines, yeah. mm-hmm. The other thing too, I I gotta say, the retro hail for me is not very pleasant. I I feel the opposite. I kind of enjoy the retro. On you like thing. it? Yeah. Grinder. I just did my first one. Give me a couple minutes. <laughs> I, have, I have the horseradish uh, <laughs> horseradish uh oh flavor right now. It's not good. So Pagoda mentioned we were talking about traveling to Cuba. Do you guys remember uh, remember that story we did in March of those two guys that built a homemade hang glider <laughs> and took off from Havana and landed in Miami? Yeah, Mir- miraculously didn't die doing it. You talk about desperation. <laughs> okay. Do you do you have the instructions for how they did this so we can get a direct flight <laughs> on a hang glider from here? There's a couple it's, of cars it's powered, by no, powered, by no, powered by United. Powered by United. All right, I'm out. Powered by United. So c- remind me what? How the hell did they do that? So the, the two guys, David Lopez Alfonso and Ismael Hernandez Chirino, built a gas-powered hang glider oh in God. Cuba. And took off and landed in the uh, in the United States. They were both members of the Cuban Aviation Club, of and course. they landed in Key West on March 25th. They mod- uh, <laughs> modified what they call a motorized Delta wing with an extra fuel tank. <laughs> it's quite literally like a wow a hang glider with wheels that oh these my, guys that's, built. That's what the uh, that's what that little girl flew in Fly Away Home with the geese. Yeah, looks, looks like a lawnmower. <laughs> It does. It, a it is more with wings. I, it looks like a Briggs and Stratton motor on it. That is so dangerous. I mean, and you're taking your life in your hands. Talk about desperation. But the reason well, why I bring well, it up again, you're going over water, so you know, it's a glider. It's meant to. shark infested water. <laughs> That's scary, man. So they did this in March, and they waited um, many months. Obviously, now it's it's October, but they got asylum. The United States granted them asylum uh, in late July, and they were released in late August. So now they are. Asylum. Uh, They're working granted. at the Padron factory. <laughs> <laughs> Where did they land? Do we know? Key West. Oh, you, man. you know, they're going to make a movie out That's of it. The closest this. point, I yeah. guess. 90 miles from Cuba. It's a great title for a movie. That is a great title. <laughs> Immediately thought the same yeah, thing. Man. Bam, bam. Pretty incredible, though, isn't it? I mean, I have sure. to say, that's just the perfect example of like Cuban ingenuity. Like, since our trip, I feel like a number of us probably do this. I'll just randomly here and there check like Cuban news, basically, like what's happening there. And there was a story I was just reading from this past week about um, iPhone repairs in Cuba. And it was this fascinating story, and especially because we actually met a guy who, we, we joked he's the Cuban gizmo, uh, our friend Nino, who literally like would repair like iPhones and stuff like this and be able to help folks set it up because obviously you're, you have to use a VPN and stuff there. And the whole article was talking about how some tourist came to Havana and had an iPhone, which granted, Apple products are obviously not you know really sold or at all um, uh, brought into Cuba. Just tourists bringing them in, obviously handing them out. And uh, some tourist was there and had an iPhone that they dropped in water, stopped working completely, total water damage. Took it to some person in Cuba that repairs these phones. Doesn't have access to you know genuine Apple parts to to do all of this or tools or yeah. tools. Somehow repaired this phone, got it working perfectly. And this tourist, by the way, had tried to get the phone fixed in Europe first, and they said, it's shot. We can't do anything about it. Which is common, by the way, sorry to interrupt, with yeah. Apple, if there's water damage, they don't want to touch it. Yeah, they, 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 they leave you alone. They don't, they don't, so they won't this is the it. crazy thing. Person brings it to Havana, gets the phone working and fixed. They go back home to, I forget where in Europe, they show the phone to whoever they tried to get it repaired by, and said, um, you know, does the phone work well? What do you think about it? Uh, is there any signs of any problems the phone's had? And the person said there was literally not a single sign that the phone ever had water damage. That's crazy. That's, That's how incredible. like sophisticated the repair was. And it's like to be able to do that <laughs> with so little resources, no genuine Apple products. I, I was just, I mean, it, there is something, we've met these types of people. They're like, 
they do so much with so little, and it, it's just remarkable. You know, we're down there in Havana. You'll see people on the Malacone riding like a scooter with like a refrigerator on their back. <laughs> Like they're driving a like a delivery service, <laughs> driving a refrigerator from some place in can Havana. I just strap say, to their shoulders. <laughs> can I just say, if Gizmo permanently moved to Havana, I could see him. Doing I would that. do it. That would be him. I would do it. He'd have a, a broken TV that he'd be taking back to his place to repair. Oh, I need motherboards. Great. Let me get the motherboard. By out the of way, that. I did that last week. Did I tell you this story? Oh, yes, yeah. you did. My no, parents. Wait a Let me go back to. Oh, sorry. It. I, I kind of picture him as the milkshake guy, <laughs> delivering milkshakes. <laughs> at 2 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Inspector Gizmo. <laughs> Milkshakes and payroll at 2 a.m. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Well, the no, I, is. I was going to say, I just it's funny you guys are busting my balls about that because I actually did it last week. My parents had a 55-inch TV that was electrocuted by lightning in Florida, brought it home, drove it home with them, and said, do you want it? I ordered uh, a new power board on eBay for 25 bucks. And now I've upgraded my Rover in the garage to a 55-inch Dolby TV. That is cool. For $25. I admire your ability to do that because I had, couldn't do it. it I it's can't do that. so easy. You it's may have mad Cuban, respect. You, you may have Cuban blood. You just don't know yeah, about it. true. I got to do the 23 and me. I might have it in there. <laughs> How would you know what to order? Like, well, you know, you go on eBay, you find the model number, and you, you order the, the, the power board. Uh, the, you, mo that's a motherboard? There, there's three boards in the TV. There's, a, there's like a control logic board. There's a board that interfaces with, you know, sound, you know, audio, video, in and out. Do -do 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 -do. And then there's the power board. But yeah, it, it, you know, the Cuban people are amazing. And to your point, that stuff's hard to do with those kind of electronics. I, I mean, if I had a broken iPhone, I'm not opening that phone. Mm -hmm. I, my, my iPhone, the lightning is like the, the, with a port where the uh, charger goes in, it doesn't work because it's got, clogged with gunk and shit and like fabric from my pocket and all this stuff so i i instead of getting it fixed because i had no patience for that i just bought a bunch of those magnet mag safe <laughs> so i'm like yeah. i just changed the charger and that's and that's how i exist <laughs> well next you should just go to cuba you can I have need, it fixed in a heartbeat do you know how to open up an iphone and clean that shit you up? don't need to i'll do it for you yeah. <laughs> i've done it for my wife she always does that she throws it in her purse and there's always gunk and gum and shit in like there compressed so. air no, there's better tools. I have some stuff. Isopropyl alcohol with a toothpick. You can get it out. Okay, you're on point now. I'm on point. Accountability hours, you know. I'll do it. Post pod. But yeah, the Cuban people genuinely are amazing, man. And, you know, it kind of ties up our discussion that we had on episode 98. The listener emails that we had about that discussion, going to Cuba, experiencing this, supporting those people. To me, like... There's a, you know, there is a difference in supporting the Cuban people in the ways that we're talking about and, and these interesting stories and amazing people that we meet and supporting the government. Those are two very different things. So I wonder how the gasoline situation is now. I think it's just that getting worse. Worse, worse and worse. Really? And the problem now with the gasoline shortage is you also have a hyperinflation situation where, you know, the, the, the money has been inflated you know, what, thousands of percent? Yeah, and then the Cuban government is telling the taxi drivers that you can't charge so much more. You have to keep it. And they're like, well, we might as well stay home then. There's yeah, no it's not worth driving. This, this, yeah. The scary thing is that there's it, in history, there's a pretty standard, well-documented, and a, and reliable storyline for this and, and where it ends, and it doesn't end pretty. No. I mean, the problem, you know, situation when you can't get basic needs, when you can't get food, when you can't, you know, even for yourself, when you can't feed your kids, you can't get gasoline to do the things you need to do to go to work. The public transportation's a mess. You know, it's this trickle down. And, and, and when your basic needs are not being met, to your point grinder, that's not going to be a pretty end. No. You know, it's, it's going to be really, really tough. Revolt could be in the air. Yeah. Who knows? So what do you guys think about the Hoyo Epi-1? I think Bam mentioned this. The the second half of this, I feel like, does pick up a little bit in strength, yeah. which helps because it was too light to begin. So I, I'm enjoying it a bit more now, but there's still not pronounced flavor notes. That's I'm not true. getting complexity, so mm -hmm. not I, that I, much better. I think my second half has actually taken a and not a not a good turn. Um, and not again. It's it's everything is muted so far. It's not like a ter it's not like a direct ninety degree left. It's just you know we had a fork in the road and we went the other way slightly. It's it's a little more bitter than 
the, the aftertaste is stronger, more pronounced, more ashy, and uh, the flavor hasn't picked up any much more. So surprisingly, the drink is really helping the cigar. I, don't know. <laughs> I, actually, I actually don't mind the Irish whiskey. I really don't. I, th- I think it's pretty good. I think if you if okay. you if you have if you're trying to get into spirits and maybe scotch or you know whatever, whatever pick a spirit, tequila, bur- you know bourbon, maybe a little too harsh or too too, too much. Try an Irish because Irishes they have it's, they tend to be a lot smoother, they tend to be a little sweeter, and, and it all comes down to the way they distill they distill it. You know, what are some of the like well known or well regarded Irish whiskeys? Redbreast. Redbreast. Redbreast is big. Which Obviously, is Jameson. That. Delicious. Powers. Powers is very pop. Powers is probably more popular than the Jameson. Powers? Did we do Powers. No. We've not done Powers. We no. did do uh, the Red Breast. Red Breast. Who made is uh, is Bushmills Irish? Bushmills. Yes, that's it another is. one. So the classic story is that Bushmills is the Protestant uh, Irish, and then Jameson is the is the Catholic Irish. Because mm-hmm. in Ireland, everything has to be bifurcated between the <laughs> Protestants <laughs> and the Catholics. Pick a side. Yeah, <laughs> I like a Jameson from time to time. We did, uh, by the way, we did Red Breast 12 on episode 7, which is almost 100 episodes ago. We did not rate it, so maybe we should revisit that yeah. and give we, it a rating because yeah. we do like that. We, we do, should uh, revisit whiskey. Jameson, to Bam's point. because We've, that, never, it's we've so, never done a Jameson. We don't do that. I love, but oh, but we do we do, no, we do it as a shot or do we say No, no, no. We, uh, definitely <laughs> not. <laughs> not. Not a JMO. We're not doing a JMO. <laughs> Pagoda's not wrong. <laughs> yeah. When I'm on vacation and the kids are driving <laughs> me crazy, I'm like, out. I go right to the bar. I need a couple Jameson shots. <laughs> He's not wrong. I, I think it a serves a purpose with a couple cubes is so like butterscotchy and caramelly and it just warms my mouth. It's nice. You know, we could do even do a car bomb actually with a little bit of Jameson and Bailey's and we throw it in Guinness. That is oh, a car bomb. Wow, oh, I've really? never had that before. Listen, the listeners that's were asking the, for you've cocktails. Never had a car bomb? That's the St. Patrick's Day episode. <laughs> you've never had a car bomb? I never even heard of it. It's it's actually what? tastes like a milkshake. I've never it heard is. of a car and, bomb. And, and it's you, so good. And it, you down it at a shot. It's never, so. On St. Patrick's Day, this is what like every Irish pub you do know, people very are doing innocent, car bombs. Right? I'm very innocent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every listener who listens to this podcast knows that's not true. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> it sounds delicious, though. It's actually... Somewhat offensive to the Irish. The, no, and you, the, the but you've got to, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, but you've got to do it quick. You got to down it. Oh, quick. yeah, because Otherwise it'll it curdles. curdle, and it's, then it's disgusting. <laughs> oh, I think oh, you, you've got to be able to chart. So the let it curdle in my part. stomach. <laughs> okay, <laughs> there you go. So, boys, tying up all of the discussions that we've had tonight, I think this is an interesting one between traveling to Cuba, those challenges now, the challenges of getting cigars, the challenges of the economics down there. Car bombings. Car- oh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> the challenges of uh, everything we talked about. We got an a email from listener John. He said, hello, lizards. My father and I are planning a trip to Cuba in 2024, and we're wondering how risky it is to bring back cigars upon our return. I've heard that things have tightened up quite a bit with searches and confiscation, uh, confiscations occurring on a regular basis. Do you guys have any issues entering the U.S. again? After your most recent visit, thanks for a great pod. So certainly, I think f- for for my perspective, mo- you know, going to Cuba in the future, those flights changing from landing in other areas first, not New York, namely Miami and Fort mm-hmm. Lauderdale, the amount of cigars I'm going to be bringing back is going to be significantly reduced. Right. But put, well, where's the listener from? Does he mention? He doesn't mention that he is in the U.S. Putting aside the flight issue. With the, all of the instability that we've just talked about, I'm asking everyone in the room, would you go back anytime yeah. soon until after of some course. of this clears Absolutely. up? Absolutely. Really? It's not going to get any better. It's only going to get worse. I've yeah. already My takeaway hearing lessons. this is that we ought to go tomorrow yeah. while we can. Yeah. All and right. I also think Do we? That, I think Do we the, go next week? <laughs> <laughs> I think the important thing for me is that... You're just, ready. <laughs> despite the economic troubles, despite everything we talked about, I think that... Even, you know, with potential unrest or these uncertainties or these these really difficult situations, the people are really, really happy when we're there and we're able to do well for them. You know, it's it's a great experience for us and, and we're able to, you know, directly impact people. And I think they're happy to have us there. And I think they need all the tourism they can get. So for me, going to Cuba, I'm certainly that this changes nothing aside from the difficulties traveling. Okay. I mean, I said after our first trip when we went in uh, March, 
I came home and I literally said to my wife, every year for the rest of my life, I'm going there at least once a year. Yeah, that's true. It's like, you know, to Gizmo's point, you feel like we kind of made a commitment to those people, right? Like there's something about like going back, like they cannot get this stuff unless tourists come in and bring them things they need. Yep. That's just the reality. And now hearing all these flights that are cut, think about how many fewer tourists like us. And families. And families that can bring stuff that these folks need, how much less access they're going to have to that. So, I mean, for me, this is always going to be part of the equation. Yeah. But um, it point. is it is frustrating that it's not going to be as easy. Yeah, I probably would not bring a lot of cigars back from there. Like, that's really what the listener is asking. That's yeah. true. Yeah. That's yeah. where I'm at. Try okay. to acquire cigars here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you pay know, a premium, get them in. Yeah. yeah. No, them. but, you know, it's really interesting. I was speaking to one of the guys over here, and we were talking about the Cuba trip, and I said, we, you know, we ended up taking our own cigars over there. We took a lot of our own cigars over there. Well, we brought well. a lot of New Worlds with us. Yeah, we bring the New Worlds. And yeah. That. And I smoke a lot of Cuba. I brought a lot of Cubans with me because I just prefer my cigars at a lower humidity. And they were very so young from an, there. Yes, yeah. and they're young and they're, they're, they're very humid. So my smoking experience, purchasing something at a shop, they're smoking it, is I'd rather purchase something, bring it home. But to the listener's question, you know, I'm going to be bringing less cigars home if I have to fly through Miami or Fort Lauderdale, which is... You know, your first point of entry into the United States, even if you're connecting, your your customs is going to be processed by that first point of entry. And Miami and Fort Lauderdale, you you just do not want to bring cigars through those airports. Yeah, what the listener has to understand is those airports, the cigar culture in, in Florida is so strong yes, it that is. any of those customs agents is salivating at the opportunity to seize boxes of mm-hmm. Cubans that they are going to take and yep. smoke. So it's just a different ballgame. Like That's if you true. go into another port of entry and you're lucky where these agents could care less about cigars, they may be just a bit more lenient about it. But mm-hmm. in a place like Miami, good luck. It's yeah. not, and it's, and it's to the point now in Miami where, I don't know if you guys have seen some of these photos, I've seen a lot of them. Folks coming in, oh, getting, pulled, they, getting pulled aside, they'll let you bring the cigars home, but first they take a razor and they cut right through the cigars and destroy them. Wow. So it's wow. like they're, they're going to another level in Miami. Oh. To to throw the middle finger at you, they'll let those cigars come through your bags. You open them, and there's razors right through the cigars, just wow. destroying them you as a middle finger. Because Miami's full of expats yes. from Cuba. That's exactly and, what it and, is. And kids of parents that have suffered greatly. You know, they they don't have a fond affinity for Cuba, so that's got to play into this. It does, yeah, and right? I, that's absolutely yeah. it. Yeah, it's an and you know, there's an anti-Cuban culture down there. Absolutely, your anti-Cuban government culture. Let's right. call it. And my problem is not that it's the it's the brazen just we're going to destroy this and let you keep it as a wow. middle finger just take them you know what it I mean just take the cigars it. just take the that. cigars yeah. it's more painful for 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 it us is. to see that it oh. is. yeah oh. you're not hurting the government trust me exactly. <laughs> yeah the government already got their yeah. I yeah. may be in jail if that ever happens to me. That's where I'm at. My <laughs> anger be. is through oh, the roof. Oh, oh, oh. So yeah. the lesson is to buy Churchill. So even if they cut him, you end up with a corona. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. true. But, so my summary, my summary comment on it is, if you have good connections in the country, um, in the United States, I mean, and, and you can get cigars, even if there's a little bit of a premium on them, get them shipped you know, to you from inside the United States. That's the way to go. Or through you know an uh, auction site like Bond Roberts or something like that that you can trust and there's verification and and there's recourse if you have an issue. Uh, I'm not going to be traveling as heavy with cigars as I've done in the past. Yeah, yeah, you know which I is mean there's unfortunate. Plenty, plenty of sites that we have already mentioned on previous pods. That's right. That you can order for them. You'll pay a little bit more, but it's worth it because those are the guarantee shipment to you. Mm-hmm. I wonder if they're more lenient about bringing back like rum. I don't That's know. A good question. That's a good question. I don't know about that. You know, to, so to me, it's like coming through those ports of entry, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, you're just gambling and I'm not a gambler. So I, I don't get, you know, I don't get off on are, that. Are feeling. you sure you're not a gambler? <laughs> I'm not a gambler. <laughs> I've seen some, uh, I've seen Gizmo pull some crazy stuff with uh, bringing back cigars from Cuba. Not through Miami. That's fair. Uh, uh, you're very handy with contraband. Thank you. You are. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, you you have been a, a great mule for the listeners. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> I think I'm retiring. Uh, you know, the thing that bums me out about this question and about this concept of bringing less cigars back is, the, you know, to Senator's point, we've met so many amazing people there that, that we haven't met casually. We've met and we have real friendships with that we, you know, we message on WhatsApp 
daily or weekly. You know, we're, we're talking to these folks constantly, and we've gotten some really amazing cigars from these folks, unbanded that they roll themselves with excellent tobacco, great construction and blend. The problem, that, that what bums me out is not bringing back banded cigars, not bringing back Hoyo Epi Ones or Epi, you know, or Partagas. It's bringing back those custom rolls from these people. You can't, you can't order these on the internet. That's what bums me out is bringing those back that, you know, you're not going to be able to support those folks and, and get them back into the country. And those cigars in particular are very special. Mm-hmm. You can't find them anywhere. Yeah. And, and to know the person that rolled this cigar. Exactly. And they handed it to you. Mm-hmm. That's special. You know, that's really special. And you can talk to them about your experience and they, they're so proud of it. There's such a pride in their sure. work and their product and their, their export that it, it, it bums me out that that's going to be a component of, of our travel moving forward is these decisions. You know? We've got to find different places. Well, there's nothing like Cuban tobacco. No. Unfortunately. Yeah. You, there, this isn't like a, like a Bud Light, Miller Light conversation. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to go to Nicaragua, though. Me too. Yeah, oh, me too. Yeah. That would be a good trip. The yeah. problem, the problem with Nicaragua, from my understanding, we haven't been there, obviously, is it's quite honestly the complete opposite of, of Cuba it's as not far as safe. safety. It's not safe. You know when you know when these cigar manufacturers go to their factories, they're traveling full armed guard carrier like oh, yeah. personal security the entire time. Like it's a full on mission keeping these folks safe. Yeah. We got Bam Bam. <laughs> oh. He's I'm formidable. Gonna, I'm going to try to work on a diplomatic uh, envoy for us. Oh, there you go. Uh, okay. Right, 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 all right. Yeah, perfect. Right. <laughs> it, it it is interesting to note that we the the culture, the industry, smoking cigars is a very luxurious, high quote unquote high society, whatever. It, it it's viewed as something that's a little more elevated. Yeah, sophisticated. I, I hate to use that word, but yeah. Um, you look at where they're coming from. His, you know, traditionally. Places like Cuba, places like Nicaragua, people are leaving places that they're made and exported from uh, to go elsewhere. And you have this class that is, I'm not trying to be Marxist here, but you have a class of people that are smoking cigars, more sophisticated, more money, paying money for it. It's a luxury item in a lot of ways, but it's very much, you know, derived from people in dire straits. And yeah. there's that that's an interesting dichotomy, I think. And I think we had that kind of before and after experience. You know, before going to Cuba on the podcast, going down the, the rabbit hole of finding and procuring Cuban cigars, paying massive premiums for, for stuff we thought was special and interesting. And then to your point, you go there, you meet these people, and you realize that, for, certainly for me, I think we've talked about this, my cigar journey now as far as Cuban cigars go, outside of the podcast and even inside the podcast here in this inside this room with our listeners is it's gone from like a real cigar heavy experience going to Cuba. It's very people heavy now, like these relationships and it's more the cultural cultural experience and, and going to Cuba now is not like, Oh, we're going to go smoke cigars, you know, with the lizards, with my friends. That's secondary. Yeah. It's like, wow, I can't go. I can't wait to go with my friends and see our friends. Yeah. I I have, you know, uh, yeah. I mean, I have a client, um, uh, who goes to Cuba two, three times a year. And he doesn't smoke cigars, hmm. but he loves it. And for him, it's the same story. They go with friends. They have friends down there. It's like a family for them, and it's part of their life now. Like, they're they're constantly going down. That's great. And uh, it has nothing to do with cigars, but they go there, and they experience the culture. They experience the, you know, what it's like going to the Nacional and all these things, and they and they can't get enough of it. Yeah. I mean, listen, my friends in in Cuba, I'm sure, you know, Rooster would say the same thing. Every Sunday, I hear from every single one of those people. It doesn't matter if we've spoken during the week or not. Every Sunday, they send a message. Happy Sunday. How's your family? How are you? We have a great discussion every single Sunday. Wow. It's like part of the, part of the culture. Like, they're just amazing people, man. Yeah. So, I, again, we've done this before, but we encourage every listener, despite everything we've talked about, Get educated about Cuba and travel there, even if it's for just for a few days. It's 90 miles from Florida. And just to have this experience, it's really, really an amazing place. Yeah, and all the, all the problems that we talk about, I think it's more for the Cuban people. Of course. I don't think as a tourist, no. you really are going to face those problems. No, we never felt those you problems. Know, we didn't feel that. No. And, you know, if there's a lack of food, it's for the local. Yeah. It's which is really, terrible, which is but terrible, it's true. It's horrible, but yeah. it's... It does affect you, though, as a tourist, right? You think about it and you try to 
compartmentalize right. it, but, but it's that's, difficult. That's why, like I was saying yeah. before, it's all the more reason to go because these people need help. That's true. Yes. And the only way they're going to get help is is ter- the government certainly not solving the problem for no. them. So it's like people, ordinary people like us and others that want to just go and visit and experience and appreciate the culture. That's really the biggest impact that yeah, anybody I mean, can let make. tourism be one f- you know, factor that can actually help the local people. Yeah, and what's interesting is when we're at dinner or we're getting a great cab ride from a guy that we really get along with, we're tipping heavy yeah. you know, and we're we're bringing as much stuff as possible to give away. Supporting the economy. Yeah. yeah, that matters to them. It, it does. matters. And we're staying, every, every dollar right. counts. Like we're we staying in about. Airbnbs. Totally. Oh, yeah. You, know? you yeah. know, it's like you tip the staff at the Airbnb, you, you visit a factory, you tip some of the folks that are there. I mean- We've seen people cry. You they had can't a, yeah. believe. You had an experience where you tipped very nicely and it got emotional for them, right? Yeah. We all have. We yeah. all have. Yeah. And what and and the most important thing I think that, that we need to impart here is that when we're walking through a factory, you know, tipping folks or it's we're not there's no ask. Like we don't leave there with a bag full of cigars. That's not our intent. That's just who we are as the lizards. And I really encourage the listeners to to go and and look for that similar experience. It's it's a it's a giving experience. It's not a taking experience, and I think that's really really important. Like I've, I've had so many listeners write us, just like Lizard John did, and uh, you know in this email uh, talking about going there, I've had so many listeners say, "Hey, I'm going. Give me some items that you guys brought that you think I should bring." And we have three four guys going. We're going to pack you know a bunch of suitcases and we lay it out, and they hand it out to folks, and it really makes a difference. And you have to realize that uh, you know Cuba may be shared for the Americans. But uh, there are a lot of other tourists from all over the world. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. From Asia, from Europe, even the Europe. Middle East. Canada. Europe. 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 Russia. Yeah. Canada. <laughs> so it's not like it's one of these places where, you know, I don't know how you imagine Cuba to be. There are a lot of people out there. A lot I of think tourists. a lot of people feel like it's unsafe. And to me, it was one of the safest, safest islands I've ever been to. Easily. To it's me, so it's right. safer than being in Manhattan at 10 p.m., <laughs> In, in like near Penn Station, <laughs> it's safer in Cuba at 2 a.m. at any time walking down the street alone. Like I, there's not a moment that I felt unsafe in any of my time in Cuba. Agreed 100%. Right, in any of these other places that cigars are made, I mean, it's way safer than Dominican Republic. Oh, yeah. It's safer than Nicaragua. It's safer than all those places that these cigars are made in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, go to Cuba. Despite everything we talk about on this podcast, we try to give everything to you as far as the news and the experience, but it's really, really an amazing place. We really encourage you to go. And if anyone wants to go and they're looking for a list of stuff to bring, we can email send us. you email us. We can send you that list. Yeah, yeah. and we'll and we'll send you you know, and I'll send more. you the same yeah. email of like things to prep, things to make sure you have for yourself, you know, visa requirements, cell phone stuff. Like we can help and we're happy to. We're happy to educate and and help other lizards get down to Cuba. So for a small fee. For a very small <laughs> fee, you can Venmo bam. Yeah. <laughs> Just I like kidding. I like cigars. <laughs> bam, this is bam. <laughs> with your Venmo. That's right. All right, boys, so we're coming to the end of our evening here with the Hoyo Epicure number 1 and the Lambe Irish whiskey. Any thoughts before we uh get into the ratings? No, you know. Pretty smooth, simple experience. I said my part. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it actually did get a little better towards right. the end. A little bit. Yeah, it did pick. It picked up in strength. Sure. I'm actually yeah. really excited to see these scores. I can't. I can't imagine which way this is going to go. I, so I, I don't know either. <laughs> I'll be honest. There's going to be a lot of nines and tens. I tell you. That. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bam. You're ready to do the uh, formal liquor rating on the Lambe Irish whiskey. Sure. All right, you're up. This is a six for me. Um, I'll never drink this again. I, I can't say that I, I, it was harsh in any way, but it wasn't interesting at all for me. Not at all. Okay. Six. Grinder. I, I'm also a six. Okay. Um, it's like I said, it's, I, I wouldn't recommend, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, but yeah, I'll drink it. Sure. Yeah. Pagoda. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, six works for me as well. Um, you know, I thought it was flavored water, really. Uh, it did help me with the cigar a bit. Um, but six six works. Senator? I'm in the same camp. I think it's a six. Um, I think maybe for someone who loves a light, much lighter style whiskey, maybe for them it's a seven. Um, but for me, I just want some more body to any whiskey. I mean, to me, it's like, I don't know. I, I don't know many people at all that, choose to drink a whiskey because they want something 
insanely light. Yeah. If you want something insanely light, like drink vodka, drink like a very light tequila. Yeah. Um, so it just doesn't fit with what I'm expecting out of any whiskey. Um, but it wasn't offensive. Yeah. I, I didn't, there was nothing yeah. about it that I said I have a bad aftertaste or anything like that. So if I had no other choice and someone poured it to me, sure, I would drink it. I wouldn't have a problem, yeah, but, but I won't pursue it, it, it at all. It's a marginal experience. And when you're saying that you can have a tequila and other spirits in place of it because you have a similar type of experience, that to me is it's a the prototypical marginal experience. And you, you have to realize we are really, like we are whiskey drinkers. Oh, so, yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's for another us, point. I, and yeah. I think that probably has, uh, you a know, lot to do it, with it. Yeah, yeah, it kind of lends to certain biases. And the last thing I will say, I mean, Giz mentioned this is finished in a cognac cask. There, there's no, <laughs> no semblance cognac. of cognac in this at all. I mean, it's like not even silly the color. To even By the way, that's, even that's in like size 10, t- 10 font uh-huh. on the bottle. They're not as proud of it as uh, I made them seem. Right. It's very small in the bottle. <laughs> Maybe keep it in there longer. <laughs> I mean, I also think clearly knowing that this is like a joint venture with Camus, the, the cognac uh, maker, I mean, that's probably what they have easy access to, those you know those cognac casts. So they're like, all right, we'll just finish Throw some stuff we already have. So I'm going to be the outlier tonight, boys. Oh, I'm going to go with a seven. I really actually thought it was very good. I think for the mild cigar that we had tonight, I thought it actually enhanced it. Um, I, I thought it was better than the cigar for me tonight. So I'm going to go with a seven. And that makes the formal liquor rating, boys, a 6.2. Interesting. Which I think is fine. Yeah, it's fine. And I think we said this, a few of us, it pairs with the cigar because the cigar itself is also very mild and it doesn't leave anything memorable with you. Yeah. yeah. So let's do the formal lizard rating, boys, on the Hoyo de Monterey Epicure number one. Rooster, you're up. So for me, it's a seven. Okay. Senator? I'm also at a seven. I mean, I I have such low expectations for Oyo, and this definitely exceeded it. It was smokable all the way through. I didn't have any significant problems or issues. I think we all just want more flavor out of the cigar, and that's what precludes it from, you know, an eight, nine, or a 10. But for someone who likes a mild smoke, I think they'd be very happy with the cigar. Yeah. I'm also at a seven. It's right, right there. I think, to your point, I think someone that has a really good Epi 1 for a mild cigar, no construction issues. You know, obviously my draw was a little tighter than I would have liked. I had to poke it, common for the Corona Gorda, as we talked about. I think this would be a wonderful cigar for them. Um, I would always reach for an Epi 2 over this or a Magnum 46 in the same size. But, um, yeah, it performed well. and, And the first half of an inch as I mentioned, was really, really good for me. And then it kind of faded from there. So it's a seven for me. Pagoda. Um, yeah, uh, this is an interesting one. I've, I've been debating between a six and a seven. But I think I'm going to uh, lean downwards and rate it a six. A couple of reasons. One of them is just not in my flavor profile. Number two, I thought the flavor really was in a very concentrated area of my mouth. It didn't fill my whole palate. And uh, there was nothing very complex about it. It was reasonably pleasant. Um, I had a really good cigar, fortunately, in terms of construction. Uh, you know, the smoke output. Um, overall, um, the uh, and the last thing was that I thought it was a bit too dry for me in the end. So I think when I started having the whiskey, it kind of really helped it. So considering the price point at 25 bucks a cigar, you know, I would leave it as a soft recommended at 6 Okay, grinder. I'm also at a six. I don't think this is um, something I would really reach for. Uh, there's so many better better Cuban cigars, and um, I, I've the 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 comments I made about the harshness and Pagoda's comment about concentrated flavor and it's not really getting the full flavor that you're looking for. I, that resonates with me very much so. So yeah, this is a six for me. Nothing special. It's just kind of humdrum and. Uh, if I had it and it was the only cigar, yeah, I'll, and I wanted a cigar, sure, I'll smoke that cigar. But it's, I wouldn't grab it. Okay, bam. Seven. Simple. Simple experience, pretty straightforward. Yeah. Nothing dramatic and didn't leave an impression. Yeah, but again, I mean, the experience was nice, though. I can't say, like I said earlier, it's a pretty elegant smoke, creamy, nice, yeah. really nice combustion. The room was full of smoke for a while there. Yeah, only, only. I mean, I, I didn't like the dry finish. Yeah. You yeah, know, that was the finish was kind of short. Mm. It was a little dry, and it had typical like 
you know, cedar and uh, mm-hmm. cream. A hint of fruit, very faint, yeah, I, early I mean, in the I cigar. Get, yeah, maybe in the beginning early. or on the cold draw, actually, I was getting some fruit, but not on on the light or mm-hmm. maybe just in the beginning. Yep. But the cigar was good, like, in the beginning. Then it kind of was really mild. and Kind of flattened out. Flattened out in the middle. And then at the end, it kind of picked up a little bit, but with a dry finish, so... It's a soft recommend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the formal lizard rating, boys, is a 6.7. Ooh. So just under a 7 there. Okay. So let's talk about the other Hoyos we've done. We've done two others, as we mentioned. Uh, very, very weak was the Hoyo de Monterey Elegantis, the Taco Perfecto we mentioned, the LCDH exclusive. That got a 4.8. Oh, that was a Lord. real rough night. <laughs> and on episode... <laughs> that was... <laughs> I didn't even realize like, we went middle five, Like I but. said, my expectations with oil are very low. I don't think we finished that cigar, most of us. Why is it called a taco? <laughs> it was not good. It was and then, uh, I usually like tacos. <laughs> the other cigar we did, uh, as we mentioned, on we did it a long time ago, episode 18. We did it with the Aberfeldy 12. The Hoyo de Monterey Epicure number no. 2 got uh, half a point above this, a 7.3. Yeah, it's a better cigar. So I actually think that the score at a 6-7, I think that actually lines up pretty yep. well with the Hoyo line for us. But again, you know, as we've mentioned, Hoyo is just a major, major disappointment as far as a Cuban global brand. I mean, they just are not, it's not pulling its weight. It does not deserve to be in the, in the ranks of Partagas and Upman and Cohiba. It just doesn't. Yeah, I don't know why is it so popular, though. A lot of people like that brand, mm-hmm. like that marker, they they go for it, they smoke it. CA. They they <laughs> CA no, but it's not that. CA loves but, but consider if you're yeah. a begin if if you like really mild cigars or if you're a beginner, I think this Epi one could be really, really good for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think what Pagoda is saying there is exactly right. It's very simple. If you think about the two brands that we have a big frustration with that are huge global brands, it's Oyo and it's Romeo, and they're known for milder smokes which is what gets anybody into you know this kind of world, right? We all started with uh, certainly milder cigars than we now smoke, and so I think it's just so easygoing, so accessible, and that draws people in. And I think some, we're all creatures of habit, and so some just kind of stick with what they know and don't venture outside of that. And I think we fortunately have ventured outside of that and found brands that we just like a whole lot more. But yeah. mo- most guys who only smoke Cuban cigars, they kind of like that flavor. They're in that mild to medium. Yeah. And a lot of the Cuban cigars are like right there. Primarily. There's really no Cuban cigar that you would call like medium to full. Do, yeah. Very oh, wow. few. Yeah, like which one? Do you like think very do you, few? Do you think serious I mean, you smokers are smoking Romeo and Hoyo? Some I think some of the Vitolas, some of the Vitolas, yes. People love those two markets, man. And, and, you know, the Romeo Churchill in this, obviously the Epicure number two and the Double Corona, people love those cigars. Yeah, like the White Churchill. White Churchill people love. guys smoke them. But I I would... Epi two in the Hoyo. I would just modify that slightly. For me, I think that the overwhelming majority of Cuban cigars are firmly medium. I actually do not think that most Cuban cigars are mild. And I think that it's these two markas that are are known and and kind of their these niche milder, is these milder yeah, smokes. That's so right. I think for most average Cuban cigar smokers, I think they're pursuing a, a medium profile, and mm-hmm. I don't think this lives up to that. I don't think at any point this even felt medium. No, not at but all. My problem is even not even in the body or the strength of the cigar. Overall, for me, it's just the lack of complexity. Mm-hmm. It's the lack of something interesting. Exactly. Like if this was a really complex, interesting cigar, that doesn't mean it's got oom for it's strong. It means that it's interesting. And if you're slotting that at the beginning of your night, like you would a cigar that's mild or medium and very complex, you know, that's great. But it, this just misses on complexity. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, like what I find is that, uh, like, at least from my perspective, because as you guys know, I prefer medium to bold and, you know, medium to full strength. Um, the Cubans I tend to like is, which are very flavorful and they, you know, complete your, like, you know, you have the RAS or you have the D4. It, you know, your whole mouth is full with flavor. Yeah, E2. And, and it's, it's so excellent. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, you can't even describe, like this wasn't really just completing that that feel, let's put it put it that way. It so. felt it felt a little flat. Yeah, you know, it felt yeah. a little empty. Yeah, yeah. There yeah. were some gaps. There were gaps. Yeah. All right, boys. So a six point two tonight on the Lambe Irish whiskey, mm-hmm. and a six point seven 
on the Hoyo de Monterey at Petra number one. Yeah. Compe- right. Compelling night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great conversation. Good being with you boys. And uh, we'll see you all next week. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for joining us. You can find our merch store and ratings archive at our brand new website, loungelizardspod.com. That's loungelizardspod.com. Don't forget to leave us a rating and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. If you have any comments, questions, if you want to reach out, say hello, tell us what you're smoking, email us, hello at loungelizardspod.com. You can also find us on Instagram, at loungelizardspod. We really appreciate your time, and we'll, uh, we'll see you next week.